that feel when they announced to you that they were going to be was it, it was, was it a surprise to you? Or yeah, well, oh, very much so. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I mean, Jack Parker had it done in Boston. And, mm -hmm. You know, I've always felt eventually uh, Jerry York will run Mason should have already and didn't. And, you know, and Red Barons and Will. So it's, it's, it's special. It's a great company. And the fact that, you know, it took so long to build this ring. You know, I think I tried every conceivable <laughs> plan <laughs> to make it happen, and it did. And so I'm very proud of it. And to have your name attached to a part of it, you know, is is tremendous. You have a lot of family coming up. What's what's been the experience like for them? Well, you know, it's really special for grand grandkids. I mean, that's probably you know, like I appreciate it, and I respect it, but to me, the fact that you can have family. My son was, he was actually the one who initiated this. He and Larry Heaskin, and my dear friend passed away and then Tom Peters, you know, and to so have your family involved in it happening and then to have your grandkids, it's just, it's really, really neat for them and that, that makes it special. How many uh, family members do you have with you and well, did they come over for, I mean, do they all live around here? No, well, my son is actually just moving to Omaha to Detroit. He's here, my daughter and her husband and two kids and that's our family. So that's all we have, basically. You know, my sister's in Stratford, Ontario, but she couldn't get here. But it's friends in the community. We have so many friends, great friends. So, you know, they'll get to participate and be a part of it. So that's what you like. You know, when we built this program, it was it was like it wasn't just building a hockey team. It was building a culture and a fan base and people who would support it and make kids feel welcome. The, the Harvey Eight, if you ever heard about them, you know, and it was all that that kind of mushroomed together and created the the team that had that great success in those first four years. Does it mean a lot that people? Still treat you like kind of like a legend. People want your <laughs> people want your photo photos with you and stuff like that. It does. It does. You know, I live in Chicago now, and I don't know anybody, and they don't know me, and it means a lot if you go somewhere and people say hi and coach, and you know, everybody calls me coach. I don't think a lot of people even know my name. <laughs> you know, so I think when you, we worked hard to establish and to build and to involve so many doctors in the, in town and. Priests, you know, we used to be follow you and thought it was a Catholic team. We had so many priests involved, you know, and so you don't lose that. It isn't the wins, you know, or that. And numbers mean nothing. It, it's it's people. Do you remember when you first started the program, what your expectations were for how things might go in the first couple of years compared to the success you actually had? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, it was trying to model after Michigan Tech and John McGinnis. You know, and I felt we, you know, you'd get there if you could beat Michigan Tech at some time. You know, and uh, so you had goals. It wasn't numbers, you know, but you, it was such a unique experience for me. I mean, 38 years of coaching and some national championships, and that's all really special. But putting that first team together, like getting on the road, you know, and recruiting two kids and three kids and five kids from one team and getting people with the talent of Layla and of Waddell and Bozek and Pyle and Milky and Joyce, I mean, great names that, you know, some of those records will never be touched. The game's different today for sure, but, you know, what they did was really unheard of at that time. Do you think it's kind of appropriate that Lake State's the opponents? Yes. That you, that you coach both teams? Well, you know, when I, when I got called, you know, and uh, found out who we were playing, you know, a perfect, you know, having played at Lake Superior and starting a coaching career there and then leaving there to come here, it couldn't be any better. Did you get a chance to talk with uh, Coach Patolni? Since I got here? Yeah. No, no, but I saw him, what, two weeks ago at the Hall of Fame, you know. What's, I mean, from the information that you know, what, what you, what's your takeaway from him as a coach? I don't know. See, I, you know, I knew who he was. I knew of him. Uh, I'd watched him on the bench in Minnesota. I never even heard him talk hockey go until the Hall of Fame banquet two weeks ago, and I was impressed with the discussion that he had, you know, with with uh, the president and, and so. But I, I don't know. He's he comes from a rich hockey program that has the ability to recruit elite kids, and his test will be, as I told him, is can you get enough talent here to be successful? Because the best coach in the world doesn't win without good players, and and that's that's the key to everything. So, you know, time will tell. You still keep up. You and Walt still yes. close together? Yeah, I talked to him yesterday and, you know, I thought Walt did a great job. I really did. And, you know, and, and that certainly it slipped towards the end, but, you know, I told people two weeks ago, don't ever underestimate what he's meant to this program. Like, to me, you know, he's the most important assistant I ever had. He helped create a chance for a championship 
in 80 and then helped build the championship in 91. And I wouldn't have left if he wasn't willing to come back when he did, you know. And so the fact, I mean, the call I made to him to see if he would come was before I accepted the job at Michigan State. So he's very, very special to me. Their uh, 1980 team is going to get inducted in the NME Hall of Fame. Uh, what do you remember from that team? What stood out to you? I mean, everything. I mean, honest to God, I mean, everything from the, the first game in St. Louis, getting shut out, scoring our first goal, you know, with just over a minute to go, I think, against St. Louis, and Donnie Waddell scored from the blue line, you know, and, and then, you know, beating Lake Superior and then Mike Gabba getting hurt from Lake Superior and them thinking that I sent somebody after him. You know, and then the games after games, losing the triple overtime to Ohio State in year three that I thought propelled us in year four to that great, great season. You know, and then getting out to Providence and all the fuss made over our, our seniors who were there after four years. ESPN's first broadcast was, was a hockey game between North Dakota and, and uh, Northern Michigan in 1980, and, and so that's special in itself. So, you know, I could go on and on with you know, and I'm probably closest to players from that group than of all the players over all the years. You built a program and made it to a national championship game in just four years. Right. Did you think that it would be successful that quickly? I really thought Marquette was special. I was here in graduate school in 71, and I always knew I would come back. I played with the Iron Rangers, mm -hmm. and I just felt it was perfect. You know, college hockey was different in those days. There's so many new programs now, but. I, I don't think anybody could have forecast that we would win 34 games, you know, and that never happen again, you know, and then they had the run we had, and I don't think so, but you could tell, that, you know, in that fourth year that we had a special group that was going to accomplish some good things. With uh, the market area, I mean, last year we named <coughs> Hockeyville, and right. just so much rich history of hockey area. How does it feel for you to be so closely associated and has so many, you know, so much roots in a place like this that's just, you know, it's all about hockey around here. Well, you know, you talk about memories and people, you know, Roger Trudeau, Ryan Reapy, Chris Gobert, Jimmy Jackson. I think we had nine players at one time on our team from Marquette, you know, which is just, it blows your mind. And I always made such an effort to have Marquette kids because I thought it was important in creating, you know, creating that tie with the community. So. You know, it isn't, it isn't just Northern Michigan, like I said, it's, it's the city of Marquette, it's the people of Marquette, you know, and it's the institution. So it, it all tied together in a, in a positive way to create success. Someone contacted you tomorrow and said, hey, do you want to coach again? Would you? Oh. <laughs> you know, I miss it like crazy. You know, I work with the Blackhawks now, and it's really, that's really a neat thing to keep me involved. Uh, and I, I've thought about it, and I've wondered about it. Would I actually do it? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think in the right situation I would, you know, I'm 70 now, so probably you shouldn't, but, you know, I don't feel that old, and I, I just, I love the game, I love, I love the scouting because I go in and I get to sit with fans, and I get to talk to coaches, and I, you know, I watch coaches, and I watch their reactions, and it's just the game itself, it's, it's, it's such a special game, and, you know, I can't imagine turning down an opportunity, I don't expect one, <laughs> you know, but would I probably. What are you going to take away from this night after, after it's all over? What are you going to remember the most? Well, I, I just think it's, you know, I've worked so hard over my life to, to do things with respect and to build respect. And I think what's happening here tonight, you know, is kind of a return. What I felt was a commitment. I, I made a decision to stay here. You know, I turned down Wisconsin and North Dakota and Denver and Bowling Green, and, you know, opportunities to leave because we were doing something really good here. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think. It's just maybe a reward in a sense, you know, for what, what we gave here, what they gave back to me, you know. So it was a win-win in all situations, and this is like the icing on the cake.